Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started with our webinar, our Act 129 funding and incentives to finance energy improvements to increase facility efficiency. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedules. I know everybody's busy these days, um, hard at work, but thanks for joining us. We appreciate that. Um, so uh, does anybody have the answer to our trivia question? Do you know how many years the Pennsylvania DEP has been awarding small business grants for energy efficiency and pollution prevention improvements through the Small Business Advantage Grant? Um, that's a great opportunity for small businesses to apply for funding to provide upgrades to their facilities. So Bobby Joe says since 2004, uh, you're close, Bobby. Um, so they've been providing this grant for 14 years. So it started back in 2007. This year, it'll be 15 years since the DEP has been providing that grant. Uh, so what a great opportunity for um, small businesses throughout Pennsylvania. And we're gonna hear more about that Small Business Advantage Grant later in the presentation. So thanks for participating in our trivia question. Um, but let's get started here. Um, just a few housekeeping rules. Um, well, before that, let me introduce myself. I guess you guys wanna know who I am. Uh, my name's Denise Bechtel and I'm a team lead for energy and environment uh, with Pentap. So before I begin, uh, let's just talk about housekeeping. Um, all, all our attendees are automatically muted with their camera turned off. And when you log in, uh, you will be, you know, we won't be able to see you and you'll be muted. You can submit your questions at any time using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. Your questions will be answered at the end of the presentation um, because this will allow us to move through material very quickly and efficiently. If you have follow-up questions, you can send them in an email to Pentap at pentap at psu.edu. We will be sure to get them answered for you. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on the Pentap events page at pentap.psu.edu slash events. All the attendees of our webinar will receive a follow-up email notifying you when the link is available. And um, we also are gonna send out a survey, okay? We would really appreciate if you do um, respond to that survey. It is a really simple survey. And we're really truly interested in what you're thinking and what your interests are um, in our future webinars. We wanna provide you the content that you're interested in hearing about. So, you know, give us those topics that you really feel that you need to hear about so that we can provide that to you. And then we're also gonna provide you a PDF of the webinar today because in our slides, we have some active links that you can click on and go to for the information that we're providing, okay? So today, our presenters, um, uh, I'll just do a quick intro of myself. Like I said, I'm Denise Bechtel. I'm the team lead with Energy and Environment for Pentap. Um, I oversee the programs and personnel responsible for offering the energy efficiency and pollution prevention assistance to small to mid-sized companies of all sectors throughout Pennsylvania. Um, you can read more about me, more information, and that can all be found on our PenTap website. I would like to introduce the presenters that we have in the order that they'll be speaking today. We have presenters that will discuss the Act 20. 129 rebate program through First Energy. And then we have a DEP representative, the Small Business Ombudsman, that will explain some of the programs through DEP. And then I will come back and discuss additional grants and incentives, other resources that are available to you as well. And then we'll have a short Q&A. So first up, we'll have Doug Good from the First Energy Corp. Then we'll have C.D. Jared with Franklin Energy and then Tim Frater with Wilden. Both gentlemen are CSPs for First Energy. And then we'll have Samantha Harmon 
the small business ombudsman with DEP. So um, each will introduce themselves and talk about their programs. So Doug, do you wanna go ahead and start us off with First Energy in the Act 129 meetings? Yeah, certainly. Thank you, Denise, and good morning to everyone. And thank you for taking time out of your schedules to join this webinar. Um, on behalf of First Energy, um, Will Dan and Franklin Energy, I wanna thank uh, Pentap for allowing us to present on this webinar and for making time available to us. Greatly, greatly appreciated. We wanted to get the word out as soon as we can. All right, uh, next slide, please. Again, my name is Doug Good. I'm one of the program managers for Pennsylvania. There are two of us. As you can see uh, on this slide, this is the map of the territories that First Energy serves. I am one of two program managers. Amy Lohman is the other program manager. I cover Penn Power, West Penn Power, and Penelec territories. And Amy Lohman covers the Med Ed territory. She also is the program manager for Maryland. And in Ohio, we have no programs, no CNI energy efficiency programs available in Ohio. And New Jersey is just starting up. And as you can see, some of those, some of you who have dealt with Shake, he is also the, he has now moved on to New Jersey as the program manager there. And in West Virginia, we do not have any CNI program in West Virginia. But in Pennsylvania, which is our topic for today, Franklin Energy and Wildan are our conservation service providers or CSPs. They will be implementing our programs and we will talk about that in a little bit more detail in a few moments. Next slide, please. Hey, on the agenda for these, this slide presentation, my, at least my portion of it, we're gonna give you a high level overview. We're gonna talk about the collaboration and the roles of our, of our vendors. We're gonna talk a little bit about the programs and resources. And we're also going to introduce our vendors naturally. Next slide, please. The timeline for this program, for the phase four Act 129 program is June 1st, 2021 through May 31st, 2026. This is a five year program. Under this program, the PUC has mandated megawatt targets as well as megawatt hour targets. So that's something new. So we will be looking at, and we are, we have provided incentives four megawatt targets. And these targets I'm gonna talk about a little bit more in detail in a few minutes. Um, the 180 day look back for our prescriptive and custom program is still available. You can look back 180 days within the same phase, which means this phase started on June 1st. So right now you can only look back to June 1st of 2021. But any project that has been completed within the past 180 days, again, it's limited right now to June 1st because that's the beginning of the phase. But any project that has been completed in the past within this phase is eligible to be submitted into the phase four program. PA application process has changed just a little bit and I will allow the vendors to talk a little bit more in detail about that, but our websites are up. They are accepting applications. That has changed just a little bit, but nothing too dramatic for anyone. We are also looking at digital signatures, implementing this later in the year. Uh, it's something that we are going to further investigate. I wanna say the earliest we would in, uh, employ digital signatures is the end of the year. It may end up rolling into the first quarter of next year, but it is something that is on the top of our list and we are looking to employ so that we can expedite applications and make it a little bit simpler for our customers. We also in this program have a solar and CHP program. The solar program and CHP program are available to customers and are paid out at three cents a kilowatt hour. 
However, one of the one of the most important facts that we want to make sure that everyone understands is that prior to us evaluating any solar or CHB project, you will be required to complete an interconnection agreement with First Energy. If that is approved, and if there are any costs associated with updates to the network or our system that have been paid or are, well, if those have been paid, then we will evaluate your system and look at paying that, uh, paying an incentive if it meets the TRC or total recovery cost requirements. So just to let you know, that is something that is, has carried over from phase three to phase four, but we're making it a little bit more clear to everyone up front that we require you to complete that interconnection agreement ahead of time and get approval. And also, again, if there are any costs associated with the upgrades, that those are paid up front. Next slide, please. Communication is extremely important to us. It was extremely important last in the last phase, but we are making it a, an even a higher priority now. We want to hear from you. We want to know what your what what your concerns are. If you have a concern or you think that uh, you have a suggestion, you think, hey, you know what? It might be. Can you do something for me here? We want to hear from you. You know, if you have a project and you say, you know what? I'm not sure if this would qualify. Give us a call. We'll talk to you about it. It may apply. You may be surprised. Customer awareness. We want to keep you updated as much as we possibly can on any changes to the program and what we are offering. And again, I want, I want to come back to the megawatt targets that, the, uh, that are part of our program now. We are going to incentivize megawatt savings that occur between June 1st to August 30th of the year, Monday through Friday, between the hours of two and six. We will calculate those hours out on an annual basis and those will be incentivized on those pro programs or measures where we have listed an incentive for megawatt hour targets. So that's something that is new to the program and is available to you. Uh, I would encourage you to take a look at our website, which I will review here in just a moment, but I wanted to bring that also to your attention. Next slide, please. Program transparency, we're gonna try to be as upfront and with you as possible, get information to you as quickly as possible through our two new vendors. Um, Again, customer awareness and interaction are critical to our program. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you think. If you like something, let us know. If you don't like it, again, let us know. Say, hey, you know what? I think you should offer this. You know, it might be something we can look into. It may be something we can in involve or employ in the, in the next phase. Again, that's part of feedback. Communication. Communication is going to be between our area managers. Our area managers, we have two vendors that we are working with now. Franklin Energy is going to implement our custom and prescriptive program. The area manager is going to be C.D. Jarrett. Will Dan is going to offer our energy management programs, and the area manager there is going to be Tim Freider. Both of them will speak here in just a moment, but we will also will gladly come out and meet with you, have team meetings with you, address any issues that you may have, talk a little bit more specifically about your project or any future project. That's gonna be also critical. We're all, again, going back to feedback and customer awareness, we're always looking to improve the process. So we wanna hear back from you. Next slide, please. Again, I spoke with this about this just a moment ago. Franklin Energy is gonna address our prescriptive midstream and custom programs. Now, midstream, for those of you who do not know what that is, that's a point of sale or instant rebate program where you would go to a distributor and purchase equipment. We are in the process of setting that up, but our prescriptive and custom program is available right now. Will Dan will address a new construction program, custom buildings program, energy management, building tune-up, and 
retro commissioning virtual commissioning program. And I'm gonna allow each of the uh, vendors, C.D. Jared from Franklin Energy and Tim Freider from Wildan to talk more specifically about these programs. Next slide, please. In conclusion to my portion of this presentation, if you look at the top of this uh, slide, you will see that is the website that you can go to that takes you to the section of First Energy's website that pertains to energy management solutions and the programs that we offer. It takes you to those energy programs that are available through Franklin and through Wildan, gives you a brief description of each of the programs, and there's a hyperlink above those, uh, above those descriptions, which if you click on that, that will take you directly to the vendor who is implementing that program. I've also put on this slide, Amy Lohman, who is handling the MedEd territory, and my information, who I, again, I'm covering Penn Power, West Penn Power and Penelec territories. That's our contact information. Please don't hesitate to reach out with any questions you might have. And at this point, if you can go to the next slide, I'm gonna turn this over to C.D. Jarrett, who is going to speak to our custom and prescription prescriptive programs. And C.D., I'll turn this over to you now. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much, Doug. And thank you, Pentap, for uh, putting this together. And of course, thank you for all the, uh, the participants. So uh, we'll, we'll basically be talking about these few items here for my portion, the Franklin overview. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the key program personnel, uh, brief, brief program overview, uh, program measures and the rebates. And uh, I think the questions will be held till the end, but um, we will go through some slides quicker than others, but uh, we wanna make sure that there, we leave plenty of time for the questions at the end. So the next slide, please, Denise. Uh, the Franklin overview, well, actually, let me go back. Can you go back one? I, I apologize. Thank you. Uh, real quickly about Franklin. Franklin's been around for about 25 years. We have over 150 utility clients out there. We, we do these types of programs across many markets, residential, commercial, industrial, um, 62 offices. We're now adding a couple of offices in Pennsylvania because of this program. And we have a great deal of experience, probably over 400 years of collective experience dedicated to energy efficiency and demand response programs. Now let's go to the next slide. So some of our key program personnel, uh, basically just wanna kind of let you know that this is our staff. It's kind of a little tough on the eyes to look at this, but we, these are the staff that is in place today. We have a couple openings we'll be filling very shortly. And these are, all these folks work here in Pennsylvania. Uh, we have dedicated engineers coming, kind of going left to right. We have the project coordinators will be doing the data entry operations entry. We have the outreach team that both myself and Ray Murphy uh, will lead up. Uh, the left side under mine will be kind of the western part of the state where Ray will have Metropolitan Edison. We'll talk about that briefly. And then we have the uh, engineering support that will go not only all the way up to corporate for additional support, but that's a quick illustration of the, the commitment we have with the personnel. Uh, next slide, please, please. So as Doug said, we're primarily going to be focused, Franklin will primarily be focused on, on these three areas, the prescriptive, the custom, and the midstream. And we'll be delivering those to the large commercial industrial customers. Those would be the ones over 400 KW, small commercial, and then the government nonprofit, all eligible uh, in the commercial industrial program. The prescriptive is, as Doug said, it's, it's kind of like a dollars per widget model, whereas the, the, the custom is more of a calculated savings uh, per annual KWH. And then the midstream is the point of sale program that uh, Doug mentioned. Like we will most likely start off including lighting, HVAC, food service equipment, and maybe some others. Next slide, please. So the program measures, these are just some examples of the, pro, of the actual program measures that we, we will put into place. Uh, that, that some of these are very much, if you're familiar with the program from previous uh, iterations, then this looks very familiar. But you have the common measures of the lighting, the HVAC, food service, et cetera there. And then there's a couple examples of the prescriptive lighting that would be, again, the menu type of item, 
and then the custom rebates will be where it's five cents per kwh up to 50 percent of the total cost the exception being the chp and solar that doug had mentioned earlier at the uh, three cents um, the new part of this phase that, that doug had mentioned also was the fact that we will be now looking at the peak kw so that'll be part of our calculations and again that's the two to six the monday through friday the june through august so there's a little extra chance for uh, double dipping uh, let's go to the next slide please Denise. so these are the key program personnel as far as the points of contact and, and again this will document will be available for you folks um, to to uh, access this these uh, this information um, deanna weaver is the senior program manager and ray murphy and myself report to deanna um, i'm kind of aligned with doug where I work with the Penn Power, West Penn Power, and Penelec uh, operating companies, where Ray is kind of aligned with Amy and works in the MedEd. So we want you guys to feel like you can contact any of us, but the first point of contact after Doug, or if you would come to us first, these are the contacts you'd want to use. Uh, let's go to the next slide, please. I think, well, that's the next slide is, is up for the, another, the next uh, presenter, so I thank you very much. And I know I went through this quickly, but I did, we will have this available to you. So, um, and we'll look forward to questions later. Thank you. All right, thank you, CD. Hey, I'd like to introduce Will, uh, Tim Freider, who is heading our energy management programs and they are being implemented by Will Dan. So Tim, I'm gonna turn this over to you now. Thanks, Doug. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Excellent. So once again, my name is Tim Frater. I'm the area manager for the state of Pennsylvania in the FE um, Energy Solutions for Business program. So in for all four operating companies I oversee. Um, the piece of the energy efficiency programs that we're going to be overseeing are new to the state. Um, First Energy pushed really hard to look at their customers um sustainability and really these are focused and encouraging you to review and improve your overall operating portfolio um and modeling for your uh, energy usage next slide please Doug. so who is will dan uh we were founded in 1964 um we've done over a quarter of a million projects working with um in excess of 350,000 customers we have 60 offices nationwide with 1,500 employees. Um, you'll see as part of our package, we will we present and offer a um, commercial new construction renovation uh, modeling, which we've done over 250 million square feet. Um, we do benchmarking service to identify areas of opportunity um, within the state. And we've been doing this benchmarking service since 2004. And we also serve 18 of the 25 largest utilities in the nation. We're a publicly um, listed um, company under the NASDAQ um, WLDN. Next slide, please, Doug. So the way that we are set up is basically um, our overall program director that handles the FE programs in the um, Northeast is Andrew McCormick. Um, I am the area manager and also your market outreach um, direct connect. Um, we have offices in Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Um, our project coordinator, Ben Mack, is also located in Greensburg. We just brought on a second project coordinator, um, Alex Falk, um, on Monday that will be located in Greensburg. Um, and then our program manager specifically is Stephanie Shields. She oversees our retro commissioning program, which I'll go into detail, the building tune-up. And Dana Coase um, oversees our commercial new construction. Um, it's new construction renovation. So next please, slide please. So um, once again, if you look at from our, you know, specifically on college and university experiences. Um, we have over 20 years of providing utility programs. And this is more for institutional um, based. We've benchmarked 1200 uh, buildings 
um, overseeing 300 plus new construction projects. Um, we've actually accessed over 90 colleges and universities or worked with in the United States um, and saved over $20 million in annual energy costs. Next slide, please. Our energy design assistance um, overall. So what this is a brand new program to the state of Pennsylvania. And what this does is it kind of works in concert um, with folks that are looking at either um, constructing a new facility or renovating um, an existing building or operation. And so what this basically will do, it helps desert, uh, determine the most efficient uh, system design. And once again, this is a tool to help you. This is, this is a guide. Um, it gives recommendations on how to move forward. Um, it uses an inclusive scenario building process. It analyzes first cost, energy performance, operational savings simultaneously in real time, um, incorporating into your FE rates along with um, the incentive programs that are improved. And once again, because we are on the start of this program, um, you have a five-year time window. So once again, if there's interest, um, you're on the front end of the program. And that's where we like to talk to people and start this initiative in reference to our, our commercial new construction renovation program. Um, next slide, please. So program overview, very simplistic. Um, we have a proactive customer outreach, as you see from today, and we will continue. There's a single common online application what that does is it basically then will funnel into what the best application is. So you have three different programs, energy management, custom building improvements, and custom new construction. So under the umbrella of energy management, we have building tune-up, retro commissioning, building operations training, and a virtual um, meter data commissioning. Under the custom building improvements, you know, um, processed improvements, compressed air on industrial applications, motors, refrigerations, HVAC, VFDs, building improvements. And then once again, under the custom new construction, and my apologies should say also slash renovations, new constructions, additions, and major renovations. Next slide, please. So on the building tune-up and retro commissioning pro programs, what are the benefits and eligibility? Very simplistically, benefits are, you know, it's a comprehensive building tune-up solution that's going to include your HVAC tune-up assessment, looking at upgrading multiple systems. And you'll hear this repetitively from these new programs that the drive is really to help your sustainability efforts in looking at multiple upgrades and how that is, and it will drive up the incentive rates in doing so. Uh, a retro commissioning pathway for deeper savings and custom solutions. And these are tiered incentives, which I will elaborate um, on a future slide. Eligibility, all commercial customers, um, slightly different incentive levels for customers under and over uh, 400 kW um, cannot have tuned up their HVAC system in the last three years on a retro commissioning program. And then um, the building should be at least two years old for the retro commissioning uh, program. Next slide, please. So what do the tiered incentives mean? So once again, you know, First Energy was looking at um, you know, the, the welfare of their entire customer base and how do they continue in the fourth phase, um, attract and drive additional savings. So basically what this does, and my apologies for not putting on specific um, incentive savings because we're in the midnight hour to get those approved. And I just, I didn't want to misrepresent what they mean, but so basically as you do more projects, your incentive rate increases. And real simplistically, ballpark numbers, you know, this program will drive 
in the ballpark of 20 cents per kilowatt hour on annual savings incentives for lighting, um, you know, in the range of a dollar per kilowatt hour savings annually on HVAC tune-ups. This also includes refrigeration, food service, and lighting control. So once again, the focus of these programs is to look at and, and help customers um, be able to improve their entire operating energy portfolio. Next slide, please. So once again, on the energy management, very simple five-step process. Um, enrollment form is an online application. And once you do that, the project gets accepted. Um, you know, simple ground rules. Are you, I know this sounds silly, but are you a first energy customer making sure that there's no misunderstandings, um, some basics. And then there's the implementation phase. And then the initial incentives are approved and returned. Um, once the project is completed, you do the measurement and verification phases. And then the final incentives are paid out. Um, and it's a constant, pro a consistent process for both small and large CNI projects, commercial industrial projects, and it's across all four operating companies, very consistent. Next slide, please. On the commercial new construction and building improvement assistance on these programs, very simplistically, the benefits are, it's really a complementary, complementary energy design and assistance. And this is customized to model and demonstrate what strategies have the greatest impact and are most cost effective. It's to get away from the what it could have should have um, possibility in reference to these programs. And when somebody comes in, how do they intelligently evaluate um, their options of sustainability? And it's incentives for both kilowatt hour reduction and kilowatt demand reduction. Eligibility, very simplistically, on commercial new construction, uh, and that's renovation also. Uh, large and small customers, newly constructed uh, buildings, additions, expansions to existing buildings, and major renovations or tenant improvements to existing buildings. On the building improvement assistance, um, once again, building shell improvements, once to the envelope of a building, energy of projects impacting multiple interacting systems like we talked about. Um, and that would be included in lighting along with HVAC, um, multiple measures that increase your uh, incentive rates. Electrical, electrical mechanical retrofits for greater efficiency, um, energy management building systems, um, and also other things that are assessed through an audit. Next slide, please. This process on the commercial new construction, renovation and building improvement assistance, very consistent with you know, what we do on the building tune-up and retro commissioning program. So it's a basic online enrollment, analysis of the actual work that's going to be done, the results that are delivered from that work, the verification that um, the savings were achieved and then incentives are paid out. Um, and once again, consistent for both small and large CNI projects and consistent across all four operating companies. Next slide, please. Once again, I'm your single point of contact. Um, my name again is Tim Freider. We're mm -hmm. offices out of Greensburg, Pennsylvania. Um, thanks, Doug. I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Tim. Um, we really do appreciate that information. So next, I would like to introduce our small business ombudsman, Samantha. Samantha, if you want to go ahead and talk about what DEP is offering us. Well, good morning, everyone. I want to thank Pentop for uh, having me <laughs> present today. Um, we can go uh, right to the next slide. So uh, first I'll give you a little introduction about what the Small Business Ombudsman Office is, and uh, then we'll go over some funding programs that are available uh, to Pennsylvania residents or businesses. Um, okay, so 
First, I wanted to talk about what's considered a small business in Pennsylvania. So for DEP, the definition is fewer than 100 full-time equivalent employees. Um, under the U.S. Small Business Administration, the definition is up to uh, 500 employees or fewer. So under that federal standard, uh, there's 1.1 uh, million small businesses in Pennsylvania and they employ 2.5 million people. Uh, they represent 46.2% of the private sector labor force and 99.6% of the state's employers are considered small businesses under this federal standard. So next slide. There we go. Okay, so the Small Business Ombudsman's Office is actually part of the of Pennsylvania Small Business Environmental Assistance Program, which includes three elements. So it's the Ombudsman's Office, the Small Business Compliance Advisory Committee, and the Small Business Environmental Assistance Program, or the Compliance Program. Um, within these three uh, elements, there's a range of responsibilities, including uh, technical compliance assistance, um, result, resolving small business disputes with DEP, uh, reviewing proposed regulations, and, and many other duties um, under each one. So next slide, please. And the SBO, or the Small Business Ombudsman, um, the number one question I ask as soon as someone says, what do you do for a living is what does that word mean? So um, the Ombudsman asks, acts as the primary advocate for small businesses within DEP, regardless of the program. And um, in this context, we also provide information on energy efficiency and pollution prevention opportunities, including potential funding sources and the benefits of taking action. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, under my office, two funding programs that are available, the Small Business Advantage Grant and the Pollution Prevention Assistance Account Loan. So next slide, please. Okay, so for the Small Business Advantage Grant, it is a grant for Pennsylvania-based small businesses with 100 or fewer full-time equivalent employees. Um, the, pro the proposed project must save a business at least $500 and 25% annually in energy or pollution prevention related expenses. Uh, this can include utility savings and expenses such as eliminated disposal costs. So um, some examples of that, so you can combine those two reductions together to get to your 525%. Um, so if you replaced lights, for example, you would get electricity savings, HVAC, you would get natural gas utility savings. Um, if you work in a medical, you know, if you're a medical facility and you want to switch to digital x-rays, um, your cost savings would be in the elimination of your waste disposal costs for the um, old school x-ray equipment and uh, materials. And if you worked in um, an industry that involves, you know, solvent cleaning, for example, um, you could either reduce the use of or change your solvents to something less toxic or improve a process to save uh, solvent and energy, all of those actions would create savings that would make you uh, potentially eligible under this program. Um, I do have here that the estimated opening date for the next round is July 23rd, so that is next Friday. Um, as of now, we still are on track to open uh, four applications on the 23rd. Um, if there is a delay, it would only be uh, to the next week, so um, we do expect it to open here very shortly for 2021. Next slide. Okay, this program provides 50% reimbursement of eligible expenses. So um, under this grant, you would spend your money and then you would get reimbursed for your eligible costs. This does only cover equipment costs. We do not cover lab labor or installation costs. So um, when you are submitting your project proposals, you wanna make sure that those costs are separated out. Uh, a big change this year is the maximum grant award for any project type is $5,000. So before there was a variety of maximums depending on your project type. Now every for every project type, the maximum is $5,000. We do an online application process and grants are awarded on a first come first serve basis. So you wanna make sure that you act quickly um, when the grant opens up. Now I will add a caveat to that. Um, we, we will keep awarding funding as long as funding is available. We have a million dollars available. So it does usually take several months before we award all of the funds. However, um, coming out of the pandemic, I think a lot of people are gonna be very eagerly looking for funding opportunities. So um, you, know, you wanna make sure you get your application in as soon as you can to, to increase your chances of getting funding. And I do want to add a reminder that there is an application checklist in the program guidelines that will help you gather all the documents that you need before applying. Next slide. OK, 
Okay. Eligible applicants under the Small Business Advantage Grant include for-profit businesses that are registered if registration is required and taxed in PA. Uh, again, they have to have 100 or, full, or fewer full-time equivalent employees for the entire company. And uh, that does include employees of businesses under common ownership. And we, we explain that further in the program guidelines. Um, but if you have multiple companies and you meet the common ownership uh, definition, your total employee number has to be under 100 for all the businesses uh, to be eligible. Um, businesses attached to residences and commercial properties may also be eligible if they meet certain conditions. As far as being ineligible, anyone who doesn't meet the conditions above, or anyone with current or unresolved environmental violations or financial or other obligations to the Commonwealth or franchisees. Okay. Next slide. Okay, uh, I do want to point out applicants may submit more than one application. So if you um, have multiple projects going, you, you can submit more than one application, but no business or businesses with ownership in common, again, that's defined in the guidelines, um, will be awarded more than the maximum grant amount, grant amount of 5,000 from the program during the fiscal year. So for example, if you have two businesses and you want to do a project at each, say one you want to do lighting, one you want to do an HVAC project, and you get approved for both, you won't receive more than $5,000 total. So you might receive 3,000 for the one project, 2,000 for the second project, but you will max out at $5,000. So keep that in mind uh, when you're developing your project proposals. Um, eligible projects include any projects to install equipment or material resulting in energy efficiency or pollution prevention, to adopt processes which reduce energy consumption, reduce consumption of raw materials, increase the reuse of raw materials on site, reduce the production of waste or reduce sediment and nutrient runoff into directly affected streams. And the project must be a replacement or an upgrade of existing equipment. New equipment and new facilities are not eligible for funding under this program. And again, I just wanna remind you there's further information in the program guidelines to determine whether or not businesses have ownership in common. Okay, next slide. Okay. I do want to note that projects are not limited to this list. These are just some examples, and we'll consider any project that meets the program requirements for eligibility. So feel free to be a little innovative. Um, so some of the project types we have considered or done in the past include LED lighting, digital up x-ray upgrades, HVAC boilers, dry cleaning equipment, um, the installation of auxiliary power units on trucks. So there's, <coughs> excuse me, it's not um, exclusively for stationary sources. Uh, recirculating cooling equipment, evaporators, and air compressors. On the other side, industrial um, facilities, including composters, industrial fans, um, as you can see, oil recycling, orthodontic 3D printers, and commercial ovens. So there, there's a wide variety of project types that we would consider um, as long as they meet the basic tenets of the program. Okay, next slide. Okay, and for these slides, um, they, I believe they're gonna be provided as a PDF form, but uh, I provided a direct link and the full website in case the link doesn't work. So you can just copy and paste. This is an image of the section that you wanna look for on that website, and it will have the 2021 documents posted next week. Okay, next slide. Okay, this is the second program that's run by uh, the SBO office. This is the Pollution Prevention Assistance Account Loan. It's a loan, low interest loan program jointly administered by DEP and DCED. As of June 2021, we currently have over $1.39 million available. Uh, this loan never closes and it's a revolving loan program. And again, this is for Pennsylvania small businesses with 100 or fewer full-time equivalent employees. Next slide. Okay, loan funds may be used to purchase equipment or implement process changes which fulfill one or more of the following. To reduce or reuse raw materials on site, to reduce production of waste at the source, or to significantly reduce energy consumption. And again, you'll be able to go to the program documents to find the specific um, limits that you would have to meet for all of these to be eligible. So DEP and DCD anticipate businesses will pay back the loan through savings realized through reductions in the cost of raw materials, waste disposal, or energy use. So again, it's it's a similar similar goals to the grant program. It's just a a loan, um, and the loan is intended more towards uh, higher cost projects because again, um, actually, next slide, please. Uh, this one has a much higher uh, funding limit, and it is. Uh, over a longer period. Uh, so this would enable people that are looking at these bigger projects to get some funding um, 
want to note that applicants must work with your local certified economic development organization to apply. Uh, you cannot apply directly for this loan. You have to work with a CEDO. Uh, it covers up to 75% of total eligible project costs. It's a 2% fixed rate for the life of the loan. Um, it has a 10-year maximum term, and the maximum loan amount is $100,000 for any 12-month period. So as you can see, it's a um, there's some significant differences from the grant program as far as the, the flexibility and the, the length of time to do your projects. Okay, next slide. I've done the same thing here. So the first link is a direct line direct link. The second is the full website. And this is an image of where you would want to go on this website to get your information. Um, this section also explains the application process, which is a bit more complex than the grant process. So if you're interested in this loan, I would recommend going here and reading through what the different steps are and what you would need to do to apply. Okay, next slide, please. Okay. In addition to the programs offered by the SBO office, DEP's Energy Programs Office runs several financial incentive programs. Again, there's a direct link in the full website. Uh, multiple funding opportunities for energy projects ranging from energy management automation to building envelope measures to more efficient operations. Includes a wide range of financial incentives, such as loans, grants, and rebates available for businesses for various measures. Uh, such as uh, high efficiency variable speed drives, motors, lighting, compressed air, pumps, and HVAC systems, and for the installation of renewable energy. Next slide. Uh, more information is available about all of these programs on the EPO website links. Um, so if you go to the EPO website, there, uh, there are buttons for all of these uh, different programs. And the next couple slides will provide a very, very brief description of some of these programs. So the Green Energy Loan Fund is a loan, interest fu loan financing for energy efficiency retrofits and the installation of energy conservation measures and high performance energy systems in buildings throughout Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania Energy Development Authority is an independent public financing authority whose mission is to finance clean advanced energy projects in Pennsylvania. The Solar Energy Program provides financial assistance in the form of grant and loan funds to promote the use of solar energy in Pennsylvania. And that's administered jointly by DCD and DEP under the direction of the Commonwealth Financing Authority. Okay, next, please. Okay, CPACE is the Commercial Property Assessed Clean Energy Program. This is an innovative financing program launched in 2018 that provides business property owners access to low interest long term loans for clean energy and clean water projects that are repaid as property tax to benefit the community. And something new that uh, you likely haven't heard of yet, um, the APO office is launching an agriculture energy efficiency rebate program. Um, so this is being considered a pilot program. This is running for the first time. Um, it's anticipated to be launched in 2021. And it'll be a rebate voucher funding program for LED lighting and variable frequency drives for ventilation or pumps. Um, some more information will be available on the EPO website about that when it comes out. Um, I did also want to point out that EPO has a publication available for download, and it's called the Energy Financial Incentives for Pennsylvania Businesses. It provides links to multiple state and federal energy efficiency or environmental improvement funding programs. Um, it includes the ones I've reviewed here. It also includes a number that I did not include on these slides. So um, please take a look at that handout and check out all the programs that are available. Okay, next slide. Okay, and this is my, my last information slide. Um, I just very quickly wanted to tell you about other DEP funding. Um, so in addition to what we've gone over, there's a number of grant and loan programs offered by PADEP for environmental improvement projects. Um, the programs are sorted by applicant type to make it easier to search. So they're sorted by residential, business, school, government, et cetera. Um, it also provides a list of programs that are currently accepting applications. So this is, um, this is just a good website to have as a one-stop shop for looking at grant loans from DEP. Um, and although this presentation is geared towards businesses, um, sometimes we do get applications that don't qualify under the business eligibility, and we'd still like to encourage those type of projects. So I've provided a link to DEP's page for energy efficiency incentives for residents. So that's the last link here on this page. Okay, next slide. Okay, and here's my contact information. As noted, um, if you have questions about the PPAA loan, uh, 
there's an email here for the grant. It's a different email. And then I recommend if you're interested in any of the pro other programs I discussed that you go to the website links provided and get the program contact info there. So that is all I have for you today. Hopefully I went fast enough. We still have 10 minutes and uh, I'll turn it back to Denise for any questions. Okay, thank you, Sam. That was great information. And thank you, uh, CD, Doug and Tim for the information on the Act 129 rebate information. Um, yeah, I still have um, some more information on resources and grants for you guys, uh, participants. I wanted to talk about the utility rebates um, from the other utility providers in our state. You know, we have PPNL, we have PICO, and um, we have Duquesne Light. And what I provided you in this slide is um, their links to their rebate programs. I know with PICO, their incentives have significantly increased as well. And they have their online application process. They have new construction design incentives and confined heat and power included in the commercial and industrial rebates for their businesses. Um, and if you're a manufacturer, you can reach out to Tim Calla at 610-909-4991 for additional information um, with PICO. So, but in this slide, um, there's the live links that you can go to if you're in those um, rate payers uh, for PICO, PPNL, and Duquesne Light. Uh, additionally, we have the DEP Alternative Fuels Incentive Grant. Um, you know, here is a grant if you are going to, um, uh, if you wanted to apply for this, this is um, AFIG, otherwise known as AFIG, their Alternative Fuels Incentive Grant. And they're offering those competitive grant funding for clean alternative fuel projects. Um, applicants that are eligible are those uh, municipality authorities, nonprofit, profits, corporations, and schools. And, you know, if you wanted to purchase a new vehicle or do a vehicle retrofit or maybe do alternative fuel uh, refueling infrastructure or maybe innovative technology projects like research, training, development, of new applications or next phase technology. Um, this is something that you can apply for. Um, I did give you two people that you could contact, Michelle Ferguson and Robert Young in the uh, slide here. And I gave you their phone numbers and their email addresses. But in the application guidelines, um, you know, there's additional folks that you can contact. The maximum funding for the retrofits is $300,000. And then the maximum funding for the refuel, uh, refueling infrastructure and the innovation technology projects is $600,000. So you can go to that web link that's provided in the slide and go and get to their guidelines for that particular funding opportunity. DCED, the Department of Community and Economic Development has the Pipeline Investment Program, otherwise known as PIPE. You can uh, contact Brian Eckert at 717-720-1400 and talk to him about the Pipeline Investment Program. Um, these funds are used for the acquisition, construction, and site preparation costs um, associated with extending a natural gas pipeline to those eligible applications uh, or applicants. And it's for any economic development organization, business, municipality, hospital, school district, um, you know, that want to provide, you know, that last few miles of construction of a natural gas distribution line to your business park or existing manufacturing or industrial enterprise. Um, so this is really created um, to help with new jobs in Pennsylvania while providing access to natural gas for residents as well. Um, so the maximum grant for this, uh, it can't go over a million dollars or 50% of the project costs. So you can contact Brian and get more information regarding that. And also the link to that is here in the slide as well. So another opportunity funding on different projects. We have the USDA, Department of Agricultural Rural Energy for America.
America program, REAP, um, another source of funding. So any agricultural producer with at least 50% of their gross income from agricultural operations and small business in a rural area can apply for this grant. Um, when we talk about a rural area in Pennsylvania, um, we're excluding those areas in the Philadelphia, Pittsburgh area, and some parts of um, Scranton and Erie. But most areas are eligible for this. Um, even Williamsport and State College are eligible. Um, actually, USDA has a web link where you can go and enter your zip code, and it'll tell you if you're in rural Pennsylvania. But the refunds, they pay for renewable energy projects um, like biomass, geothermal, small and large wind projects, small and large solar projects. They also pay for energy efficiency projects, uh, lighting, cooling, refrigeration units, uh, replacement of those types of inefficient um, equipment. So they have loans. They have guaranteed loans up to 75% of the total eligible project costs, and they have grants that'll pay up to 25% of the total eligible project costs. And information, um, you know, you can contact the business program specialist in Harrisburg, Rick Nafel at 717-237-2289 for those, um, for information regarding USDA REAP funding. We also have the Sustainable Energy Fund, um, SEF, um, through West Penn Power. Um, they provide funding um, offering, so they have financing offering through conventional financing, so they can, you know, provide loans from twenty-five thousand to a million. Um, so, if you're interested in that, you can contact West Penn Power. They also have financing for Act One Twenty Nine micro um, energy micro loans, but they also do some grants. Um, and so if you're interested in apply, you know, applying for one of their grants, they put their RFP out um, typically the third quarter of each year, which is due um, in January and February. And I have put their website and their email address here so you can look at that um, and go to that link whenever you get the slide presentation. We also have uh, the next sustainable energy fund um, that is available for the PP&L rate payers, okay? They provide commercial loans. They provide um, stipulated energy savings agreements uh, and then company investments. So they have three different types of uh, funding opportunities for you. So if you're a PPNL rate payer, um, you can go to their website or call them and ask them about the opportunities that they provide. And then we also have the Sustainable Energy Fund through MedEd in Hemlock. Okay. And in Eastern PA, you can call uh, to reach the Berks County Community Foundation at 610-685-2223. And in Western PA, call 814-536-7741 to reach the Community Foundation for the Alleghenies. And once again, the web link there is available for you to reach out to them. So we have the three sustainable energy funds throughout Pennsylvania for those rate payers through First Energy, through West, um, through um, PPNL, and then through. So we also have tax credits. Uh, you can get a tax credit to do uh, solar, 26% uh, for solar projects, um, to do um, renewable fuels, uh, fuel cells, and then also wind for wind power. You can get 25 or 26%. And then you can also get a 10% tax credit for geothermal. And uh, to get the form, I put that link on here for you as well. And I do want to apologize. I'm going through this very quickly because I do want to get to our Q&A. I know that um, Amanda talked you know, briefly on CPACE. CPACE, I gave you the web link to CPACE. Um, CPACE is um, provided in 
13 counties have activated the program so far. Allegheny, Bedford, Berks, Center, Chester, Delaware, Erie, Lebanon, Lehigh, Montgomery, Northampton, Philadelphia, and Wayne counties. So you can get CPACE, the program through those counties. And then three other counties have passed the resolution and they are Chester, Lawrence, and Westmoreland counties. But if you go to that web link, they have a really nice map of Pennsylvania and the counties that um, have, have that uh, program in play. How I find funding and resources, um, I go to the DEP webpage that um, Amanda has provided you. And I also go to www.desireusa.org. And it's a really nice um, resource to go. And if you click on Pennsylvania, it gives you all types of funding that's available um, for residential, for industrial, um, and everything. And so. This is a really nice link to go to uh, if you're looking for any kind of funding, any kind of incentives, or any kind of tax uh, information that can be applicable to you. Okay. Um, then our next slides, the next few slides are just pen tapped uh, slides about our mission and what we're about, the services that we provide, and um, the staff expertise that we have on board and I, the services that we provide, energy and environment and then our innovation services. But what I'd like to do is just tell you real briefly, we have a couple webinars coming up. You might wanna look at those. We have calculator toolkits that we're talking about and then we're gonna look at um, powdered metals, the industry trends and university engagement opportunities. But really, let's get to our questions. We have a lot of questions and I would like to go through them uh, very, yes. This is Tana. Um, I had sent a note in the Q&A that we'll do our best to follow up um, the answers um, to all of these questions in our email that's gonna go out in a couple of days with the recording of this webinar. So if we can't get through all of them since we're already at noon, I thought that might be just um, a good way of giving everybody the information they're looking for. Okay, okay. Um, can we address a few of these? Um, sure, sure, yes. go ahead. Some of them are longer than others, though. Okay. So Bobby Joe was told that we work through Clear Result in Central Pennsylvania, but Doug mentioned someone else. Um, so Clear Result was taking care of the end of phase three, but now we do have the new C CSPs, and they were introduced during our webinar today. So, um, Bobby Joe, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Um, okay, so Geraldine Churchwell, I don't have a building yet, but I wanna know, can I apply so I can get upgrade my building when I get one? Denise, I'm going to take that question and defer that right to Tim Frater at this point. So the answer to that is yes. And let me clarify it. If you are looking to design and uh, build a new building or move into a existing building and renovate it, um, that would be under our commercial new construction renovation program where engineers will actually do the energy modeling and lay out different energy efficiency um, applications and alternatives as you actually go through the final phases of your design. So yes. And then um, my contact information is on here. Um, we can follow up with the virtual meeting right now. Um, I think that'll change in the next couple weeks or month and then kind of walk through those steps on what's needed and work it from there. And just to dovetail on to that, um, in the work management program, energy management program, Tim needs to be involved very early on. So if you're looking at a project, you're looking at a building, renovating building or starting a new building, you need to contact Tim quickly. His team will work with your architect and engineers 
And there will be, uh, there's a design incentive also available in within the program to assist, uh, assist with that portion of the construction. So um, again, it's very important that if you're going to be building a new building or renovating a building, you need to get Will, Dan, and Tim involved very early. All right. Thank you, Tim. Are Montgomery County businesses, schools, and governments eligible for this? And yes, um, we have PICO that covers that county. And I provided information on PICO during the presentation. Um, I still not sure how you for folks work. Do you get paid? Are there rebates and grants available to small businesses? Denise, who's that? This is pushing towards. Oh, well, I think. Well, based on the time, I think it was me, but yeah, it, it, it doesn't look, um, uh, like it was directed to any of us specifically. Yeah, um, I will say thank uh, as a as a taxpayer <laughs> funded position. Yes, yeah. I appreciate you. I, I appreciate that I get paid to do my job. But um, if I if there you have any questions about small business grants and loans from DEP, um, feel free to contact me directly through my my contact info, and I'll let um, Doug speak to uh, who you would contact um, under their programs. Yeah, our programs are um, funded through the energy efficiency rider on your billing. Uh, this is a state mandated program by the Public Utility Commission and the Public Utility Commission oversees this program. And um, if you have further questions on it, you can give me a call. And do you work with residential or and commercial? And that's Again, yeah. That, is that uh, us? We we have residential programs, but our presentation today was geared toward towards commercial people. industrial programs. But yes, we do have residential programs available, and you can access that, them through First Energy uh, First Energy's website. And actually, um, all the utility uh, act through Act 129 has residential uh, programs. Okay. I think we're getting most of these taken care of. Um, yeah, and, and some of them have been answered while, while the well, presentations were going on. So there's written answers right. to some of the questions if you guys want to go look at those. I think we have covered all the answers. Um, okay. We are going to provide, like I said, um, the webinar slides to you in a PDF so you have the live links. Um, we appreciate everybody being on. Uh, we had a lot of attendees today, so um, great questions. Presenters, thank you so much for the great information. Um, I apologize for going very quickly through the end of my presentation, but those are just additional resources. Go to the DEP uh, grants page because there's additional resources there for funding. The desire.org page, um, resources there for funding. If you have any questions, you can contact Pentap and we can help you out as well. Um, and you have all the resources that were provided to you today through First Energy, uh, through Franklin Energy, through Wildan, and through the um, DEP Small Business Ombudsman, um, Samantha Harmon. So thank you, everybody, and uh, have a great day.
Thanks, Denise. Thank, Thank you. you. Denise. Bye. Thank you, Denise.